Hi my darlings, I'm Sophie Darling and today we are doing something a little different when we're not doing Hollow Knight today. We are going to play through What Remains of Edith Finch. This is a game that I have wanted to play for ages and just never got around to playing. And a few people have mentioned in comments that they... W would I consider playing it? And well, they've just given me a really good excuse because they've asked for it. So I might as well. <laughs> I don't think this is a super long game from what I can remember. So I think I'm just going to try and keep everything in the one episode. There's no point splitting it up if it comes to like two hours, you know, two, two and a half hours. I think that's like a nice sweet spot for YouTube, especially if it keeps like the full playthrough in. But yeah, we're going to get straight into it. We're going to jump in and we're going to see what this game has to offer if it's as good as what everyone's been telling me it is. And I think I'm also going to start recording Ori soon because we're at a point with Hollow Knight where we're getting a lot of multiple endings and we're trying to sort of see as much as we can. So I still want to do Hollow Knight, but I also want to kind of transition into my other game series as well because I know that some of the endings for Hollow Knight can take a little bit. So I know some of them aren't too bad, but some of them can take a while to get. So why not do Ori at the same time? And again, Ori is a nice transition from Hollow Knight. It's also Metroidvania. It's not as difficult. It's a super cutesy kind of vibe, similar cutesy kind of vibe. So I'm really excited to play Ori. So yeah. We're gonna get into the game. Names of Edith Finch. Can we, can we stand up? So I'm playing with controller, but I wonder if- This isn't going to make sense to you. And I'm sorry. I'm just going to start at the beginning with the house. Okay. I'm wondering if maybe I should be playing on keyboard and mouse rather than controller. It is beautifully designed. I don't, I, d I didn't I know what to expect. 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. That's a very odd looking house. Orcus Island. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. Can I not read the bills? I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. This property is protected by video surveillance, so no trespasses. In her will, my mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know. Or she thought that the mystery would be enough to bring me back. I find it very odd that she wasn't just like allowed to go in half the rooms in her house. That's very strange. Also, why wouldn't her mom tell her? So I imagine this whole game is kind of deciphering the mystery I mean, of. I've driven this way in a long time, but I saw a few have prints. Like the mystery of her family, and like the mystery that she wasn't able to see behind these locked rooms. It's a deer. The game is stunning. Like I said, I didn't know what to expect, but it is beautiful looking. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. There we go. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. It's very odd. 
I don't quite trust that weird spear, I'm not gonna lie. That looks so unstable. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Missing Milton Finch, so a relative. Is she, is she pregnant? It kind of looks from this angle like she's pregnant. So like, I wonder if this all stems from her being pregnant and having a family of her own. She definitely is. Like if you look at the angle, so her being pregnant is kind of stemming this family now, mystery. As a 17 year old, I knew it exactly Or oh, maybe she's not then, because she's 17. I was afraid of the house. But it does look like a baby bump. I mean, you can be pregnant at 17. It's not ideal, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just being rude, but like, it does look like a baby bump. <laughs> Did it through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. Did, did, did we need to go this way? <laughs> the power had been turned off the night we left. So they left the family home. First time in years. Edith, Milton, Lewis, Dawn, and Edie. So Milton is her brother who's missing. Lewis is the brother that died, and I take it that Dawn and Edie are the parents, or maybe like mom and grandma. felt like I was home. It literally looks like somebody... It looks lived in. So did they leave suddenly? But instead of a family, there were just memories of Yeah, life. Grandma. Edith, Edie, Lewis and Dawn. Beloved brother to Edith, son of Dawn, great-grandson to Edie. Wait, so if Milton's a relative... Why would it just say beloved brother to Edith? Is Milton like a cousin or something? It feels very odd that they just left Milton off of the memoriam, even though he's missing. Like how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon, except our cat, Molly. What a cute name. What a cute name for a cat. Or how only one restaurant would deliver to our house. So we had Chinese a lot. Kind of gross that this has all been left here. Like, it, it looks as if they left in a rush. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing yeah. everyone but sparing the furniture. It looks really abrupt. So was she a child when she left? Because that's like a baby plate. It's like a young child's kind of plate. My mom was the only one of us who could imagine Great Grandma Edie living in a nursing home. Hmm. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it. Like a smile with too many teeth. It it does look really cozy though. I'm shocked that like nobody's stolen anything from this house. It's just like a giant house on a hill that nobody is 
nobody's touched. A lot of things got left behind in the whirlwind of that last night. My mom wasn't much of an optimist, but she never stopped believing that my brother Milton was alive. So then why wasn't he put on the memorial thing? That's what I don't understand. If Milton's gone missing and she thinks that he's alive. Edie told me once that every finch who ever lived is buried somewhere in the library. It's a bit gross. Hopefully not like literally buried in the library. It's a bit concerning if so. Great Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. That's so cute. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. Oh, uh, okay. I guess we'll go upstairs. Can we take the chair? I always wanted one of those chairs Every when I was younger. Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. <laughs> what? So the mom was like, I'm going to seal up the place. <laughs> and then her grandma's like, uh, no, I want to spy into every room. Why? That's so weird. Molly, 1937 to 1940. Oh, so she was 10. Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with if she hadn't died in 1947. Oh, that's no age. Oh, her door's so cute, though. And her bedroom looks adorable. I'm going to go in that room in a second. I just want to have a wander around. Sven. Edie. So, Sven... Was Sven... Edie's husband, then? It must be. The last time I was in Edith Senior's room, I was 10 and she was painting my portrait. So Sven must be married to Edie and Barbara was their daughter or one of their daughters? Calvin. My grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. Well, great grandpa then, I guess. 1950, 1961. So. 11. God, everybody's dying so young. What? One? No, come on. As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. Gregory. Like, but why is that over the bathroom? That's a no age. Did I read that? 1976 and 1977. But why is it over? That's very strange that it's over the bathroom. But okay. I'm just... I'll not question it for now. Barbara. Before to 1960. Barbara was a child star for two years. Until America grew out of it. Bit weird. Edie's father, Odin, built the original house. Okay. So Odin built the original house for Barbara, who I imagine was his one of his daughters. And Edie is Barbara's sister, maybe? Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Hmm. This... This part that goes Mom up. There four stairs on the night we left. Okay. But there was an open door, so we'll go into this one. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room, 
Oh, this is cool. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. Whoever painted these on the walls is so talented. Finch is look. <laughs> it's a little sign and it's the house destroyed underwater. It's Louis really coolly designed. Passages, but I never believed him. 20,000 leagues under the sea. Why is that? Oh, my uh, controller trigger was not on the right thing. So pressing the buttons was a little bit slow, but it should be fine now. Turns out my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Uh. What? I find out what my mom had been afraid of. From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. Oh, Milton's very talented at art. Well, at least the cat's okay. That drawing's not so great, Milton. But the cat, I'll vibe with the cat. The cat's kind of cool. This, maybe it sounds like I had a plan, but I had no idea what was behind that door. Just like I had no idea where all this was going to lead. Molly's room is so pretty. I grew up looking at Molly's room through the peephole. Molly's gerbil had a tiny bedroom with its own even tinier gerbil cage. Oh, that's kind of really adorable. Being inside for the first time, I felt like I'd stepped behind a painting. A little tiny little gerbil cage. A little jellyfish. I got the sense Edie had spent a lot of time here before my mom sealed the doors. Was Edie Molly's sister then? Possibly. So December 1947. It's like the room is frozen in time from Molly being dead. Like she died and then the whole place is just frozen in time. December 13th, 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It started when mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. What does she mean she'll be gone soon? Like she's running away or like she knows she's gonna die? I thought about eating Christopher, but I held back. <laughs> Poor Christopher. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. My Halloween candy was all gone. Did she literally just eat the gerbil food? You can't be that hungry. I kept eating and eating. I ate a lot of things that night. You probably shouldn't eat berries when- Then I heard chirping outside my window. You probably shouldn't eat berries if you don't know what they do. You don't know if they're safe. Mom, can I come out now? Why did her mom lock? You shouldn't lock your child in their bedroom. That's it was a barn dangerous. Going back to her nest. I reached out for her. And suddenly... I was a cat! What? What do you mean? Suddenly you were a cat. 
Wait, wait, why can I... Can I jump? Oh, there we go. I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. Oh, it's Christmas time. Like, is she imagining this? Mom and Dad didn't even look at me. Where do I go? Do I go down? No. Cat is angry. Can I jump up? Oh! I could tell she was getting really tired. Oh, it's like um a tree house. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. Okay, so she's not a All cat. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. I think she's pretending to be a cat, isn't she? But it's actually her climbing this tree. Oh. Um, this is very dangerous. I gobbled her up. And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. This is beautiful. Rabbits. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Oh, here. The music is really pretty. A mama rabbit. A mama rabbit. Oh no. We ate its babies. Get here. She was almost too big to carry. I started choking, but I couldn't stop eating. I anticipated <laughs> was to be a roly poly shark. I rolled off a cliff and into the ocean. Now I was hungrier than ever. Oh my god. <laughs> what kind of game is this? I'm a snake. I'm a snake. I'm a slurry little snake. Am I a snake? Now I was a monster and I smelled people everywhere. Oh no, I'm just a monster. I thought I was a snake at first.
He's a slippery little snake monster. I was big, but I moved real quiet. Ooh. <laughs> Do I have to go down? I wanted to stop, but also I didn't. Drunken sailor, we eat him cause we're a monster. My fringe is annoying me. I can see it out the corner of my eye. a new mouse because Jesus Christ I slithered onto the sand and the good smell went into an old pipe there's an actual condition I can't remember the name of it but there's there is a condition that kids can suffer from that causes like insatiable eating like it's an actual medical condition and they'll eat anything they can get their hands on because they just don't feel full and they're constantly hungry. And I'm curious if potentially... I got closer and closer. That this is what Molly has and that's why Molly is so like imagining herself like as a ravenous predator. All of my stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep. But it's not going to wait much longer. It needs to be, and we both know. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. Hmm. This is very odd. Very strange. This will be obvious later, but my mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. Though, when we adopted a stray kitten, she was the one who named it Molly. I spent a lot of time in great grandma Edie's room. 
Lappy. Rob? <laughs> Papli? <laughs> Bob? Burpy. So you'll just kind of rhyme. The Derpy. But I can't see the name of that one, which is kind of sad. What about this one? Do you have a name? What am I stuck on? Can I not? Oh, there we go. Zerpy. You knit me a new <laughs> pair of gloves every year, just in time to replace the old ones. Lewis died a week before we left, but Edie had already started to memorialize him. Oh, almost like she knew he was gonna die? Is she like psychic or something? Built in 1937, uh, Sven Finch. One summer, they evacuated the island, but Edie refused to go. For a few weeks, she was a celebrity. <laughs> She's a stubborn old woman. I hadn't thought of myself as Edith Jr. for a long, long time. Conspiracy random junk. My friend Bigfoot, home movies. Mole man beneath the Finch house. Edie gave a big interview about a mole man living under the Finch house. My mom was furious. <laughs> when Edie told people Sven was killed by a dragon, she could also have said he was building a dragon-shaped slide that collapsed. She could have, but she didn't. It does sound cooler when she says he was killed by a dragon. Even in her 90s. Sometimes Edie seemed a lot younger than my mother. So, I, I, Molly, I'm trying to piece it together. I think Molly her was her like daughter easy, then. Yeah. For 500 years, the Finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune and misfortune. Odin Finch buries the latest victims of the family curse, his wife Ingeborg, and their newborn son, Johan. On January 7th, 1937, he set sail with his family and his house, oh. hoping to leave the curse behind. Okay, just pack on your house onto a boat. But 40-foot waves off the coast of Washington send the house and Odin to the bottom of the sea. That's why it was painted on the wall. I was wondering why the house was on the wall, like why it was painted on the sea. I thought they were just being quirky, but no, they're just memorializing a tragedy. <laughs> Bit more boat. Odin's daughter Edie, with husband Sven and baby Molly, step ashore on their okay. new home, Orcas Island. Odin Finch is the first to be buried in the new family cemetery. His daughter Edie is already dreaming of a new Finch house. So Molly was their daughter. Whatever's wrong with this family, it goes back a long ways. Poor Molly. She was so young. Mysteries of death and thereafter. Odin Finch. Sven and Edie. I'm just making sure. Norwegian folk tales. I'm just trying to make sure I don't miss anything. The only trace Grandpa Sam's first wife Kay left on the house was the pink bathroom. Ugh. It was a pretty big trace. Yeah, the carpet. Oh, could you imagine getting out the bath with really wet feet? And standing on this like really plush pink carpet. Ugh, no.
There's a secret in this bathroom by Sven and Edie Finch. There's a Finch. secret in this bathroom. It's in the last place you would look. It isn't in the cupboard. It's hidden in this book. What the hell is this family? Jesus! Calvin Finch, born April 25th, 1950, died 1951. Sven gave Sam an old camera he'd refurbished. He never put it down. Murder probe clues exhausted. Milton. I've seen traces of Milton like everywhere. Fort Calvin. Fort Sam. So Sam's her grandpa, and Calvin would have been her great uncle. I knew Grandpa Sam had a twin. And that he never talked about him. Yeah, I can't imagine anything worse than losing a twin. You know, you're very connected individuals and it, I guess it would almost be like one half of you is missing. Oh, that's, that's so cool. Very scary pumpkin face. Can I can I go back for a second? Just because there was a way to go up, but I didn't go up. Odin Finch. Nineteen sixty one Command Center. This is so I guess my cool. I didn't like history any more than my mom did. How I Want to Remember My Brother by Sam Finch. The thing I remember is that when he made up his mind, that was it. My brother said he'd die before he ate another mushroom. And he did. That's so sad. Can I get off the swing? Or am I just swinging? He broke his leg. Oh, I have to push both feet. At Barbara's funeral, we swore. He'd never be afraid again. And he wasn't. Oh, he's going a bit high. Calvin always wanted to fly. Calvin? Oh, Calvin. You're going. Calvin, dinner's ready. Oh, Calvin. Calvin! But that day, he finally made up his mind. Oh, Calvin, no, don't be stupid. Oh, Calvin! I told him going around was impossible. Oh no! Maybe if I hadn't said that. 
Oh, the branch is making a cracking noise. Maybe it's the one time picked up. And maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt it. Calvin! I think he'd already made up his mind. Oh my god! That's what I want to remember about my brother. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. The day he made up his mind to fly. And he did. Oh, what? Calvin's story felt strangely familiar. When I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. Calvin! Oh my goodness, I don't- the funeral, Edie roped off Calvin's half of the room. Oh, imagine having to share a room still with like the ghost of your brother, like who's dead. Mom said Grandpa Sam enlisted at 18 and never set foot in the room again. Yeah, I don't blame him. Yeah, I don't blame him. But what I don't understand is, did did it not click in his head? Like, I'm going a bit too high. Maybe, maybe it shouldn't. The passages were a pretty tight fit. They'd obviously been built for smaller hands and bellies. You say that, but there's literally bottles of wine in here. I know it's a cabinet, but like, still. Okay, so that leads out of here. So we want to go back in. Because then this leads to Barbara. Look, there's Milton again. It's almost like the Growing ghosts up, of Milton's I everywhere. Of Barbara as a child star. I never thought about how hard it must have been for her afterwards. Was she 16 when she died? Barb Street. She looks like she's in her teens. Happy birthday, Barbara. How is that not moldy? Maybe it is moldy, but like... You'd think they would have... cleaned it up. I don't know. all the stories people wrote about Barbara's death, I'm surprised Edie saved this one. Oh, Jeff here with another ghastly tale inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it the surprise ending of Barbara Finch. As a child star, Barbara was famous for her scream. Now at 16, she was all washed up. A has-been. But in a lucky break, she'd been asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. It was just the boost her career needed. Unfortunately, her scream hadn't aged well. <laughs> Getting better. I think you just need the right motivation. Her biggest fan and current boyfriend, Rick, was about to demonstrate when... <laughs> now that was a great scream. It was Barbara's father, Sven. He'd slipped into a table saw oh. and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So Barbara got stuck babysitting her youngest brother, Walter. Her convention comeback was cancelled. <laughs> okay, I'm hearing frustration, but I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried... A gang of hoodlums in Halloween masks have been terrorizing Orca's Island tonight. Police are urging residents to... That came from the basement. You're right. 
Also, I loved your delivery on that. Why is your basement door locked? Because my dad likes making puzzles and secret passages. There's a key hidden in the music box. The secret is to keep winding and winding until finally the key pops out. Thanks, babe. I'll be back in a sec. Oh, no. 20 minutes later, Rick hadn't returned. Oh, they're going to get murdered, so aren't they? To look for him. Right on cue. There was literally a newspaper that said, like, murder mystery. For the music box. So, like, there was a newspaper on the stairs that's, like, um, something about a murder. So I'm going to presume that's Barbara. And as she wound the key, she listened for Rick, but the house was silent. But if Rick took, if Rick took the key, why would it be in the music box? Right? If Rick took the key to go to the basement, why would it still be in the music box? She found Rick's crutch and imagined the worst. No, that's probably like her dad's, like her dad's bloody handprint. From like when he split his, um, Hand on the sword. I can't see a thing. Where am I going? <laughs> I feel dumb right now. Like, do I go in here? Like, I, I can't. Oh. The gang's leader is the infamous Hookman Killer, Dr. Carl Hamill, who impaled and then ate his family 10 years ago tonight. This is a very feels almost cliche. Like a cliche horror, like 90s horror flick. Or 80s. Uh oh. Fucking idiot, that's what Barb, you get. <laughs> relax. I was just trying to scare you to help you find your scream. Well, I'm not. Oh, scared. you dumbass. I'm furious. Then act furious. All I'm getting from you now is that you're hurt and confused and you She threw him out. Oh no. She kept a little something to remember him by. Barb, have you seen my other crutch? And she was still holding it when she fell asleep. Watching the late, late picture show. Hours later. Barbara! Walter, what's going on up there? Ah! Okay, I'm coming up. Oh no. This is a trick. You're dead, Walter. It's gonna be an intruder. And she sent him home. So she's on her own. Oh, fuck. This is such a cool design, though. The fact that it's, like, stylized like a comic. Walter, are you there? Walter vanished. But his bedside radio was still on. Orca's Island Police described the man as six feet tall, with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. Oh, no. I returned, saw the hook man, and was speechless. He was quite smashing. <laughs> and he was, he couldn't get enough of Barbara. Okay, Barbara, there's got to be another way out of here. Played her part beautifully. Molly's door hadn't been opened in years. The hinges grow. Moving, but 
sensed this story might not be over yet. I'm so confused. Oh god, if this ends up being like her boyfriend sneaking back in and then she accidentally kills him. The bookman had vanished. She listened for his breathing, but all she heard was... Would you answer the door though? Inside the house. <gasps> oh dear. Surprise! Bravo, Bravo. You were wonderful. The monsters had come to surprise her. From Barbara, it was a dream come true. What? When she saw what kind of monsters they were, and she realized what was about to happen. She was going to be famous. And with her final breath, Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. I wasn't there myself. Oh, God. Poor girl. She had a taste for stardom. But unfortunately, so did her fans. Of course, the police blamed it all on poor Rick, who disappeared the same night. And little Walter, hiding under his bed the whole time. He took it all pretty hard. Yeah. But that's another story. I mean, if I saw my sister tucked inside the get murdered, is all they ever found of her. Her ear. <gasps> no. What I call a real eerie tale. Oh God. Edie told me all Barbara wanted was to be remembered, as absurd as that comic was. Maybe what Edie saw was a happy ending. Yeah. Jesus. So basically, Edie lost Molly, Barbara, Calvin. Basically lost, like, so many of her kids. That's so tragic. Can I, can I not open the door from the inside? Do I have to go back the way? Um, let me just stop a check. There's not like anything I'm missing. Maybe I have to go, I might have to go back through. Yeah. I guess now I know why mom didn't like me playing with the music box. Yeah, that would make sense. It's funny. All those times I played with the music box and never found the basement key. It would make sense. Yeah, honey, don't... I'm surprised that they were allowed to keep the music box because surely if she'd been murdered and her ear had been placed into it, it would be held by the police as, like, evidence. Seems a bit odd that they kept it this is a beautiful game though Sven Mom said the basement was off limits, unless I wanted another tetanus shot. Look at the little gnome 
gnomes. Who's making gnomes and dragons? I would love to know how to do something like wood carving. It takes some real skill. I saw Edie sneak down to the basement once, carrying packages. Amazon packages. She's hiding them. She's got your family in debt with Amazon I Prime. It's how they get presents. you. Nah, it's Amazon packages. It turned out she was hiding a lot more than that. <laughs> I like Edie. She seems pretty cool. Oh. I remember asking mom once about where Walter had gone. Is Walter the mole man? after Barbara died, he got as far away as he could. It's like if there's a pattern in all these stories. I think it's that none of us has gotten very far. Freaking underground bunker. Was this where Walter was living? Yeah. It was where Walter was living. Oh, Walter. Goodbye, everyone. I can't believe I've been down here for 30 years. On that first day, after the shaking started, I didn't think I'd survive a week. But after a few days, I settled into a routine. That's what kept me sane. Having a schedule, living for today. I always expected to be dead tomorrow. If you wait long enough, you be used to anything. What's the shaking? Even a monster Earthquakes? on the other side of the door starts to feel normal. Almost friendly. And then one day, everything just... Stop. Whatever that thing was, it was gone. Maybe you got tired of waiting. Or psychosis? Or maybe I just got tired of being afraid. Trauma can do weird things to the brain. It's so been a if week he's now, the longest in thirty years. So if he's traumatized by what happened to his sister. I'm done waiting. I have to leave while well, I still can. Then he could be imagining that something's happening to him that's not actually happening. Is that the crutch? Oh, it is. Yeah, he's thoroughly traumatized. Poor Walter. Almost seems like psychosis. Because like, you can imagine all sorts of really, really fucking disturbing stuff when you've suffered severe trauma. Somewhere. So the room shaking might not have Whatever actually been Barbara. real. It could just be him imagining that something Molly. is attempting to attack and shake the room. And Calvin. Maybe this is all a mistake. But I need to stop living the same day. Even if it kills me. Yeah, like Groundhog Day. Whatever's out there, I want you to know I'm ready for it. Oh, he's gonna get hit by a train. I'm going to appreciate all of it. 
especially the food. Oh no! Don't mind if I only have a year left, or a month, or a single week. I'd be happy with one more day. I can already imagine the sun. Oh no! I called it as soon as I saw the tracks. Okay, so the shaking was the train, so it's not psychosis, but he's definitely traumatized. Walter died when I was six. I can't believe my mom never told me he was down here. Oh, as soon as I saw the tracks, I was like, I'm sure my no! Mom was trying to protect me. Yeah, I kind of don't judge your mom for her. Not wanting you to know all this. This is so severely messed up. It would make sense. Maybe she was afraid I'd end up like Walter. No, I think she was just doing what but a mum would never do. Told me about an uncle under the house. I can only imagine what else she was hiding. Mm. It could be that your mum's a bit make the same mistakes she made. Okay. That's fair enough, but I feel like your mum was just doing what she thought was best. Trying to bury something that's still alive. Okay. I think we're being a bit harsh on your mum here. Oh god. Now that there's only one of us left. Or maybe two. I thought it was time I heard the stories for myself. Well, maybe two. And found out what happened to everyone else. I still think she's pregnant. It's the and maybe but two. But worried the stories themselves might be the problem. Maybe we believed so much in a family curse. We made it real. Poor Walter. He was so optimistic as well. I think that's what's really heartbreaking and sad was he was so optimistic about oh, having that one day. This. And he didn't even get that one day. Sad. Maybe it'd be better if all this just died with me. But I thought you should know about your family. She's pregnant. She's talking to this unborn part. baby. Yeah. The history you're a part of, she's pregnant. Though to be honest, I feel as lost as you probably do right now. Called it. Called it from the beginning. I am smart. I think the people in these stories believed them. For what that's worth. I am big brained. Freaking called it. I knew it. Because the language that they're using is is both past and future tense. Like, the history you're a part of. She says, um, she basically insinuated that there's possibly two. She says she was the only one, or maybe two of us, insinuating that there is about to be a new Finch member, which is the baby she's carrying. I'm just trying to double check I'm not like missing anything because obviously this is the dragon slide. I was just thought there might be like an interaction here. But no, it doesn't seem to be the case. Okay. Such a beautifully designed game. Look at the house. 
had that history of imagination and stubbornness and madness. Any of it seems possible. Do we go this way? I think way? we've been surrounded by death for so long, we've just gotten used to it. What kind of family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house? Well, I mean, Odin died before the house was built, so you kind of have to bury him somewhere. It's embarrassing for me to admit this, but... <sighs> what kind of question is that? Like... <laughs> What kind of people build a graveyard before building a house? The kind of people that don't want rotting bodies to just sit there for like months while they build a house. It's called being a rational, sane person. What? The cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one. Oh no, Lurpy. Three of the gerbils are mine and two had been my fault. Oh, okay. Little gerbil murderer. Zerpy, Lurpy, Furpy, Chirpy, Burpy, Derpy, Derpy Jr., Lucy, Daisy, Charlie, Tucker, Coco, and Zoe. Shadow, Christopher, the goldfish. I love how they buried the goldfish. Like, no animal was insignificant, every animal was buried and honored. Oliver, Bob, and Sh Shatsy? Bailey. Oh, and it's a frog. Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. Yeah, the graves are really beautiful. The graves are kind of symbolic of what made them happiest in life. So Barbara wanted to be a star. Walter? It's like a little man looking out at the ocean, at the big world, Walter. That's my birthday! Obviously not 1952, but August 26th, that's my birthday. I was born on 26th of August. That's cool. So Edie is dead, 2010, Sven, Calvin, and Molly. Oh, Molly's grave is adorable. It's got the little cat. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. My mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie, the past never went away. Well, it's her dad. So I guess this is Edie and Sven watching Odin pass away. The water at low tide. Oh, God. That's traumatic. You, you basically get to look at the remnants of your old house. And where your father died. Poor Edie. Edie said she dreamed about the old house every night. Can you blame her? Oh, he's on top of the old house. Like, he's going down with the house. Edie's side was always easier for me to understand. But the older I get, the more I can see where my mom was coming from. Simon. Her dad had been pretty strict, but it wasn't enough to save her brothers. She was just trying to do better. Gus and Gregory. The fact that Gregory dies when he's one is just really sad. Sanjay, Milton, 
spawn, but there's no death. She lost two of her brothers, just like I did. I get why she tried so hard to protect us. Yeah, it makes sense. Lewis and Milton. We never found Milton's body, so my mom insisted we were putting up a monument, not a tombstone. Which makes sense. Plus it gives you somewhere to remember them by. I still find it weird though that on the There's memoriam so I wish I could ask my mom now. For Lewis that they didn't Part put Milton down. This is what she wanted all along. For me to come back someday and find everything out for myself. I still find it weird. But looking back on it now, if she told me there was going to be so much climbing, I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. Knew it! Knew it! I called it! Oh my god, I'm so smart. I never met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. They were both pretty intense. Yeah, because they're traumatized. Sam spent his life shooting photos, but mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera. I guess we're all afraid of something. You know what I think it is? PTSD. If he was nervous and being in front of the camera, it would be because of the noise that the camera makes can sound like, um, it can trigger, like, latent traumatic memories of war. It's why people don't like fireworks with PT- like, when they have PTSD, it's why they don't like fireworks. Because it reminds them of bombs going off, so, like, the flash of a camera or, like, the clicking noise can trigger, sort of, traumatic um connotations and it can cause them to kind of zone out so yeah you would you would absolutely avoid photos if you felt uncomfortable clear skies and clean living awaits you said he found facts about baltimore while you fly oh and it's only addressed to her so does she run away does she leave her husband and her family? Sounds like it. Instead of hiding from death, Sam seemed to go out of his way to meet it. Hmm. Oh, he's got a little astronaut for Calvin. Dawn, I promise you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are going to last a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Am I going to have to shoot anything? It's a hunting trip, Don. Shooting is strongly encouraged. Shouldn't we be leaving? Just want to get a shot of you, Don. Then we can take off. What? Oh, there we go. Perfect. It's going to rain the whole weekend, isn't it? Please just take the damn picture. Hey, language. I will never forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. Okay, got it. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. <laughs> Right, Dad, it's starting to clear up. Still freezing, though. Where am I? 
are here the birds I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to be taking a picture of but I really like the music. I'm supposed to be taking a picture of the trees. I love how I said I was big brained and now I'm very confused as to what I'm supposed to be taking pictures of. I thought it was the birds. That I was supposed to be taking pictures of, but now I don't think that's the case. <laughs> Alright, I'm very confused. Just taking pictures willy nilly now. Just saying, I'm not always gonna be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was gonna be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't been out here in 20 years. Dad! Eyes, Don. This is such a wholesome a moment. Dad, I, I just breathe. Turn off your imagination. Let me get behind you. Do I have to do this? Don, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to survive. Need to be strong. Great shot, Don. Oh, God. Really? You're taking a picture of this moment. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Don. Always remember that, okay? Y your daughter's crying, sir. Dad, it's twitching. I think That's it's totally so normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about it. Dad! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Calm as a bitch, I guess. <laughs> Is that how he died? <laughs> Sorry. Of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. I should laugh. That's awful. But, like, is that legitimately how he died? <laughs> Oh fuck, that's uh, I guess, uh, karma. It's a bit like when people go hunting and they get like eaten by a lion. It's kind of like, well, <laughs> what did you expect? Like, I feel sorry for Dawn, but <laughs> not so much for Sam. Karma's a bitch. That was just so unexpected. <laughs> I can't stop laughing, that's really bad. <laughs> I just didn't anticipate it. Just kind of came out of nowhere. <laughs> he didn't anticipate it either. Ayo! <laughs> oh, I'm going to hell. It's fine. It's fine. I already knew I was going to hell anyway. After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. Oh. Gregory. Gregory, Dawn, and Gus. So Gregory must have been Dawn's brother.
Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. I think he saw things the rest of us don't. What am I supposed to do? Oh, I was like, what's going on? There's a little duck. And a frog. Back over, Gregory. It's time to... Hold on, sweetie. No. Hello? Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. Whee! Am I supposed to be doing something? You reminded me so much of Cal. Do 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 do. What 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 is happening? Whatever it was, he saw. I guess I'm supposed to get up there, but like... I, for some reason, just... I, I can't? Oh no. The toys! Come on. This is mechanically <laughs> quite difficult. <laughs> Am I aiming for the soap? Alright. Come on. Oh god, I should probably be playing with keyboard and mouse because controller, this is quite, quite hard to do I know how silly it sounds but I worried about a baby being too happy but I could feel him slipping away sorry about that Gregory bubbles I know you did everything you Oh. About the world he saw. But why would you leave? <laughs> There's so much I don't understand. What? Why? About Gregory. About everything. Why would you leave a baby unattended in a bath? That's so dumb. Oh my god. I know what happened. Where is she? What happened wasn't your fault. I mean. 
sure is happy. Is he? And he'd want you to be happy too. No, come on. Good luck, Kay. Love, Sam. No, I'm sorry, but like she's a hundred percent at fault for that. A hundred percent. You don't leave a baby unattended. I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry, and yet. Oh, a poem man. for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard. Before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. My father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom or the words that I I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Just hit them all with the kite, Gus. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. <laughs> Gus, you're gonna get a smack. <laughs> Oh, your dad's not gonna be happy. The wind picked up and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. Oh, here. Oh, God. The rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, Make the music louder. Oh no, he's gonna get struck. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone. Just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. Oh but I god. Didn't. Until we found you. She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. Oh man, that's brutal. Raise flag, Jesus Christ. What a strict family. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. <gasps> oh, 
Oh, she still has pictures of them as well. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. Yeah, I can imagine. She lost her dad and her two brothers and her mom left. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta where she met my dad, Sanjay. And Sanjay's dead as well. Can I... Am I not able to read the diary? Do I have to go outside? Okay. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. And to see kids in the house again. Mm. I feel like Dawn Dawn's had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. I feel like Dawn was doing everything she could to like protect her kids from what she had to suffer and endure. Things were good, almost normal. Fact or fiction? But it didn't last. Teaching to learn, Dawn Finch. Seven ways to create a fulfilling classroom. Myth, the curse, history. So we did sound like they talked about some things related to the family, not everything, the beginning of but the some was things. Birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. Oh, Milton. Imagine having this space as a kid. He's so talented. Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. That's so good. I never got to finish it. I was four when Milton disappeared. She draws him like his caricature because I guess she doesn't fully remember what he looks like. Or maybe that's how he wants to be remembered. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Hmm. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. Mom 
Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Everyone always told me to stay out of Lewis's room, except Lewis. I love how unique every bedroom is. Like, it's all very unique to their personality. Is it built on, like, an old boat? Very trippy. Lewis's room smelled very, <laughs> very familiar. Like that weed. <laughs> Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery. but he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... wander. I asked him to describe it. I'm trying to control this both he at one time and it's really hard. Imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats. And toads. A dragon? And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. And he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. Dangerous. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. Oh no. It seemed very promising at first. He's not going to be able to tell. A new friend. He's not going to be able to tell facts from fiction. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. Oh God. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. And songs for them to play. Whee! He talked about starting a band. He was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, 
were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. Oh, he's gonna do something stupid. Because he, he doesn't know he fact from fiction. And he won. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Louisville. St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis, until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Oh no. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a handsome queen. Like a tell your own story. The Queen was on her own quest for sinister serpents. of her silver harp his chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon Even then, his logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. Oh, God. You can't even so see the machine anymore. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. Oh, God. It was hard to argue with him. Where am I? What? Did I break the game? I'm really confused. What's happening? I, I can't. Oh, I just keep walking back. I must have just got caught on something which wasn't allowing me to walk backwards.
Um. <laughs> what? <laughs> is that is this supposed to happen? I I don't I don't think that's supposed to happen, right? I don't- I don't think that's supposed to happen. <laughs> Please don't glitch on me again. I don't know what the hell happened there. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck me that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I just unfortunately got some weird glitch. <laughs> it was so odd what happened. We began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Oh no. Oh no, he's not, is he? I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. Alice would be packed with his companions. What? Oh, it's Molly. He insisted on advising. Molly the cat. Your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. What a brutal way to go. Oh, God. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. Oh, Jesus. Sounds like a schizophrenic state. Like, just not being able to tell the difference between fact and fiction. And reality becomes blurred. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. Because yeah, Edie probably wouldn't have gone. Am I not able to go down? Where am I going? Up? 
Oh, up again. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. Easier. I wish we'd stayed. Oh, there's so many missing posters in the room. But I understand why we left. How could you stay? ended up leaving everything behind. I think it's probably too painful to take it what all with you. I've been coming for a long time. Maybe I should have come sooner. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Last day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. Hmm. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. <laughs> when my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. It's a bit dangerous to put that candle there in the hallway. The thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled. Off. No, I've seen that house every day of my life. But I never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. I got turned around. So dangerous. You have to be very silly to do this. 
For a while, I wandered. I started seeing things. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and... Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. The next morning, the van came to pick her up, but she was already gone. I bet she went into the sea, didn't she? After to be that, with the house. To be back where she felt... She belonged. We both tried to make the best of it. A few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. Oh. Cancer? She got better for a while. And then she didn't. And then I was alone. Oh, that's so sad. Last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you and tell you all these stories myself. But I like guess the baby? Just now, things didn't work out that way. What? This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. What? Who? I'm s Don't know why I'm emotional at the end of it, because there was so much sad stuff happening throughout. Oh, I don't know why I'm so emotional. Oh my god. I just didn't expect that, the twist. Oh 
my god, that was a shock. I just, I didn't expect that she was going to be, like, dead. Um, and that was, like, her child reading and, like, her journal and, like, reimagining that process. Oh my goodness. What a wild ride that was. Such a good game though. Like for such a short game, the storytelling is phenomenal. Like the design, the music, the storytelling. This is, wow. insane i i do wonder what happened to her dad though because like it didn't talk about how like her dad died but he is written down as having died so yeah i wonder i wonder what happened to her dad because like we know how but then again it's not his story is it it's the story of the finches so i guess that's why it doesn't give you like what happens to the dad but jeez This is crazy. So yeah. I just I don't I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is the absolutely wild ride. Absolutely phenomenal game. I'm so glad I played this. I don't know why I got so emotional at the end. I thought I would have cried probably sooner, but I think I was more just angry. Like I the I think two of the most shocking deaths for me with Gregory and Lewis, like, Gregory's was entirely avoidable, and I thought I'd be upset because obviously it's like a one-year-old that dies um, in, like, a completely avoidable incident, and I thought that would, you know, it, <laughs> looking back, I think that, that probably should have been the moment where I cried, but I think I was more just angry because it was like, what? you know, who leaves a baby unattended. I think that it just made me really angry. Lewis's was really sad. Um, you know, the fact that he lost himself and the, just the way of his death, I think is the most brutal. It's just so, so brutal, but this, Amazing game. I'm so glad I played this. Absolutely amazing. If you can see here, like, Sanjay and Kay are, like, leaves on the tree because it's not their story. The same with Sven. It's not their story to be told, but the rest of the Finches, it is their story. So I can, I, I understand now why it's not noted down, but yeah as we're coming into christmas it's getting a bit more hectic for me so if ori doesn't come out this weekend or next weekend it may just have to be in the new year but we'll see i'm going to try to start release more um more videos onto youtube but it's finding the time to sit down and record because i work full time and life is a bit hectic but we'll see hopefully <laughs> hopefully but thank you so so much for watching this video and again if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more content like this please consider liking and subscribing and until next time bye